Thank you, Bruno, and, and thank you for having us uh, for this session. Uh, I'm going to date myself by saying I started with business objects back with the Web Intelligence 6.5 release back in the uh, early 2000s, so been uh, uh, familiar with the journey that many of you have been on, uh, as well as business objects and SAP for over the last uh, 17 years. So. Uh, Really excited to talk to you about Extending Analytics. Um, and what I want to start by doing here is uh, thank you all for being uh, customers uh, of SAP and analytics. Uh, and now I'll jump into the presentation. Um, so we know you have a large investment in your SAP business objects enterprise deployment. So what I want to start by saying is that we will continue to invest in the future of this product. In fact, enterprise maintenance now extends to 2027 at a minimum. Providing maintenance timelines among the longest in the industry, our intention is to protect our customers' on-premise investments while we plan a transition scenario for moving on-premise workloads to the cloud. To highlight a, cute, a few key areas, if you missed this morning's presentation on 4.3, we're investing in improving user experience with a new WebE report designer and consumer merged interface, complete functionality of new BI launchpad and enhancements to key BI suite components. When it comes to enterprise readiness, you're enhancing scheduling, publishing, simplifying installation and deployment, and complying with the highest levels of security and product standards. You will see support for new versions of data sources, applications and operating systems, as well as simplified IAS deployments. This all contributes to lowering your total cost of ownership using on-premise SAP analytics. As more and more customers are running both business objects and SAP Analytics Cloud simultaneously, we are significantly increasing interoperability and working on tools, guidance, and capabilities to help our customers transition their workloads to the cloud, if you desire. We expect this hybrid approach to be key for our business objects customers. You will be able to leverage existing on-premise assets such as universes and webby documents. We are also simplifying your SSO configuration and providing user management across the cloud and your on-premise platforms. You will also see much improved integration with Analytics Hub. So for the rest of this session, we're going to be exploring the SAP Analytics Strategy and SAP Extend to the cloud for your business objects de deployments in much more detail. But first, what I'd like to do is share our overall business technology platform strategy for augmented analytics and transcritical data platforms. Hopefully this will answer the question, why is SAP doing this? To start, we often have to look back to help us better see the path forward. In an analytics world, we evolved a lot over the past years. Historically, analytics reporting was enterprise focused. It was based upon historical data. It was static, linear, and reports usually came from top down and thanks to heavy manpower requirements, they were expensive to create and thus limited in scale. We should know because we rolled out Crystal Reports in 1990s. These were created by IT and were operate, operationalized for the enterprise, sent out once a month or maybe once a week and via email. Over the past six years or longer, analytics has evolved now to become more self-service orientated and dynamic. Self-service analytics allows analysts and business users to create their own insights and interact with them. Yet still, the bigger part of insights was hidden to the masses. And you see these with tools such as web intelligence and the introduction of Lumera. But now we are entering the age of augmented analytics. With the vast amount of data we now have access to, the intelligence we can gather is unlimited. Analytics are now intelligent automated and even predicted. We aren't guessing the future based upon linear data of the past. With the rapid development of artificial intelligence and machine learning infused in analytics, industry analysts see the next big wave happening with augmented, enabling your business to make more confident decisions and realize business value deeper, faster, and at larger scale. And now the beautiful thing is that analytics is for everyone. With the cloud, you can provide incredible insight to anyone in your company, from category managers to suppliers and customers. 
We now enter the age of information workers. Instead of users chasing the analytics, the analytics will now start chasing the user. While analytics evolves at SAP, we are happy that wherever you are in your journey, that we are here to support you across all three approaches, and we can bring you along with your journey to becoming an insight-driven organization. Now we're going to look into and say, how does this fit into an overall enterprise data strategy? I think most of us all understand and know analytics is only as good as the data we're connected to. So at SAP, in order to deliver on an insight-driven culture, you need to harmonize your data strategy with your analytics strategy. We at SAP are delivering, whether on-premise or in the cloud, what we call the business technology platform, a platform that brings enterprise data together with live connection to analytics and an ability to build interactive workflow or applications within your business processes. I always hear from customers a complaint that business objects is slow. Well, what I've seen over the past five years is this. It's not business objects that's the problem. It's normally a data warehouse configuration or a database that is slow. But when you move to a data platform approach powered by SAP HANA, you will see report and query improvements that are as large as 400 times faster than your current databases. I recently worked with a customer in the US federal government that had a report, ready report take four hours to run. And by moving to this platform, it now takes two seconds. The goal of the business technology platform, and you look at the four components of database, analytics, intelligent technologies, and application development integration is the following. From a database perspective and data management, we want to make better decisions faster with in-memory technologies that optimize storage compliance and analytics. From an analytics perspective, and Brian Kelly will jump into this deeper, is what we call smart features to help you discover deeper insights, simplify access to this critical information, and empower everyone in your organization. From an intelligent technologies, we want to embed machine learning, RPA, artificial intelligence at scale into your enterprise. And the last part around application development is a very interesting concept. Does analytics need to be a dashboard, a story, a report? What well, we're seeing now another wave with an augmented analytics is that it can be an app. So providing a platform that allows you to do, achieve data intelligence with the built-in enterprise AI and to build applications that you can extend out to your business community. What's interesting about these challenges of developing and, and delivering this new type of platform is these challenges need addressing by multiple IT solutions. Wouldn't it be good if they were all part of the same system? In order to achieve impactful business results, customers must have all the necessary services for data-driven innovation working together. However, despite the greatest technical progress across industry, most customers still struggle to innovate and turn data into business outcomes. We've identified strategic business problems across four key technology areas, database and data management, analytics, application development, and intelligent technologies. I'm not gonna go through each one of the stats on the screen, but they're pretty impressive. When you look at analytics, turning insights into action is challenging, and 67% of companies fail to become insight-driven companies. In the government space that I work, the stats is actually at 73%, 73%. So for everyone on the phone, don't feel like you're behind. We're all, we're all starting this journey together. You know, the trends we see from an analytics perspective is the new era of augmented analytics is disrupting the market beyond modern business intelligence. This combination of machine automated insights, human authored analysis, market for planning and simulations built into your analytics platforms, we see growing and growing demand in the marketplace. SAP's positioning in these markets is crucial to understand where we stand today before we can look at our path forward. We are in an era where data plays a vital role in all decision-making. So having the ability to manage X data and O data 
Gaining new levels of business insight and turning it into impactful actions are absolute key to customer success. Once again, I'm not going to go through all the statistics, but utilizing SAP HANA, a reduction of 100x in sales query execution time. Uh, I told a similar story around a web intelligence report going from four hours to four seconds. That is delivering on excellence to your business community by integrating your data strategy with your analytics strategy. It's becoming clear that the role of technology and innovation is evolving and has never been more important for our customer success. So what we envision for our digital platform is to provide the required technologies for intelligent enterprise to power the intelligence suite, SAP Cloud Platform, SAP HANA, SAP Analytics, and SAP Leonardo, to deliver the next generation in experience management and offer the necessary technology standalone to our customers and partners for unlocking data-driven innovation. Now let's talk about the EXTEND program to how we can start this journey together. SAP's analytics vision centers around SAP's analytics cloud. We're providing a journey for SAP Business Objects customers to embrace SAP Analytics Cloud. SAC is our strategic direction forward, and it is changing the way our customers run their business. It helps them understand their data in context to make faster and confident decisions. The integration of business intelligence, enterprise planning, predictive, and augmented analytics in a single engine allows for a smooth experience for reporting, to simulation, to enterprise planning, and back again, all leveraging augmented features through machine learning. We'll get into more details throughout this session, but at the highest level, SAP Analyst Cloud was built from the ground up to address analytics needs in the cloud. It is our top priority to invest in the interoperability between SAP Analyst Cloud and Business Objects Enterprise on-premise. Since many of you are using both of these solutions together, we are also investing in the tools to help our customer move use cases to the cloud. We are not recommending you move your on-premise investments entirely to the cloud, but rather extend the right use places to the cloud that makes sense. And Bruno will touch upon that when he talks about 360 scan coming up. Additionally, we believe that analytics without context has less value. For that reason, SAP Analytics Cloud is being embedded through the entire SAP Cloud Suite. With this change, not only can more users benefit from SAP Analytics Cloud, but we can also better meet the requirements in each different domain. I always like to use the example, if you're a manufacturer in the supply chain, you have an inventory status report. Well, wouldn't it be great if that report became smart and it started to tell you why numbers are going up or going down? The biggest transition from moving to an augmented analytics approach to machine learning is now analytics cloud and the platform is going to start telling you why things are happening as opposed to what has happened. We believe that taking this hybrid approach to meet your analytics needs is the best path forward for you, our customers. And with this new program, we're making it easy for you to do so. SAP offers a conversion program called the Cloud Extension Policy to allow for a partial termination of on-premise maintenance for business objects when replaced with a new SAC contract. We have seen a lot of customers, what we call right-size their business objects maintenance to help start their journey into the cloud. You can see a simple explanation of how this works in the diagram on this slide you can reduce your maintenance and add SAC. The benefits are pretty compelling. First, you can benefit from new innovations that we'll be talking about more today in Brian's demo. And second, you can save right away because the new, less expensive, web intelligence-focused license provides savings that can be used to start moving discovery use cases to the cloud. And you can start benefiting from the innovations that are built in the SAC platform. Two things I want to highlight is that um, partial termination of on-premise maintenance is allowed when it's replaced with a cloud 
subscription. Second, the annual value of the subscription must exceed the annual value of the terminated maintenance. This is an exciting program to help our customers start their journey into Analytics Cloud and into the business technology platform. And with that, Bruno, let's go to a poll question. Thank you very much, Brian. Uh, so basically, we'd like to know if you're interested to convert some of your Bob J business object licenses to SAC. Um, so actually, we've while people answer, I can say we've got probably five to 600 active deployments with 3 million administrative users. And we see actually a clear trend of customers wanting to convert and converting licenses uh, to Bob J. So that's uh, quite interesting. And uh, we've seen that going a lot faster in the past six months. And as 4.3 will be out, there'll be even more uh, possibilities to go uh, towards SAC. So that will even be more exciting. So uh, we've reached over 50% of people who voted. Uh, I think we're about to uh, stop the poll. Uh, so the results Thanks, are actually Bruno. very interesting. Uh, Jason is, if you look at actually, uh, a lot of people are interested in SAC and, uh, and a lot of people are interested to go to SAC. This is no surprise to us. No, because we all we understand it's a journey, and, and it's going to be a journey that takes not months, uh, but years. So thanks, Bruno, for the poll. Um, as I just mentioned on the previous slide, and I think the poll indicates, you know, business object customers are on a journey to embrace analytics cloud. But the key thing is at your own pace. Every customer is different. They're in a different place with different priorities. So I have a quick three examples to share with you. In the first example, this business objects customer is a manufacturer that moved their entire on-premise analytics to SAP Analytics Cloud to take advantage of their augmented capabilities that are not available in their on-premise tools. They are able to provide a much wider range of employees with better access to the content that they needed. So that's a full shift. In the second example, a mail order e-commerce company wanted to take advantage of dashboarding and visualizations, leveraging the features in SAP Analytics Cloud and through the smart features. They successfully created and required reports from Webby to SAC to meet their defined success criteria. And in the final example, a large auto manufacturer wanted to replace Numera visualizations with SAP Analytics Cloud. They didn't replace their own, their on-premise tools, but they used them together, hybrid with minimal impact to their existing systems. They were able to provide a better user experience for more employees. And the last example around speed of innovation is what we did with Topgolf. Um, in less than a month, uh, a project from Team Village, they needed to deliver a 360 degree real-time view of their business for a new facility they were opening up in Australia. This included real-time mobile point of sale reporting labor, spend, cost of goods sold, and instant customer experience reports. The solution also had to extract data from SAP ERP application and five other non-SAP systems. And finally, it had to be compatible with financial reporting formats used by other Village Roadshow division. Topgolf Gold Coast just had three weeks to build, test, and go live with a new solution that could pull data from across its systems and report to operations. Sales and marketing, food and beverage, finance, and executives around the globe. And the pressure was on as CEO Kirk Edwards to make a decision fast. We got roughly 1,400 visitors a day, he said, at about $40 spent per visitor. Any delay meant over $55,000 per day in lost sales, explains Edwards. SAP offered a comprehensive set of tools that met all of our needs. Plus, we could deliver the, pro the project quickly and in-house, helping us keep costs low. A great example of quick time to value leveraging SAP and non-SAP data sources and analytics cloud to deliver business impact. Now you may be asking yourself, how do I get started? Well, we've got a couple ideas for you. So here's a couple examples of potential starting points. Business Objects Explorer and Dashboards are now SAC Explorer and SAC Stories. 
if you're using Explorer today on premise, you're all aware of the maintenance end of life within that product. So if you leverage Explorer, starting a project to move those workloads over into SAC is a great place to start. Bob J Analysis for Office, Lumera Designer, and Scheduling, those functionality and capabilities are now SAC Analysis for Office, SAC Application Design, and we have a planned release in Q2 for scheduling and pu publishing within SAC. What leaves you left is this new Web Intelligence license that has Universes, Web Intelligence, Crystal Reports, and Lumera Discovery. So the first thing, and here's a five-step process to help you get started. Step one is you need to understand your current business objects landscape. And we recommend you do this with 360 Scan that Bruno will talk about in a minute. To understand what are your top reports, who's using them, and which ones are best candidates to move to SAC. Step two, meet with your SAP and 360 account team, analyze those top used reports, and pick a couple that you think are candidates. Next, take those reports and validate with the business that they will see better you'll see benefit in these new augmented and smart features. Step four, run an SAC workshop for the business users. Step five, build your project plan and get started. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Bruno to review 360 Scan. Thank you very much, uh, Jason. Um, So basically, uh, we've got a new offering that uh, we've launched with SAP. Uh, we're we're offering to scan their or to scan customers' business object environments uh, for free, and basically this will be allowing to do data decision uh, facts. So overall, uh, one very interesting fact in business objects is what we're finding out is actually two key metrics: is 20% of the licenses are actually on average, never used. And this is actually a very conservative figure. And actually 50% of all documents, uh, such as Webby, are never used uh, in the past 13 months. So uh, that's the type of information that 360 Scan is going to help you find out. And knowing that information, you're going to be able to do data-driven decisions. So sometimes we say business objects is like a box of chocolate. Okay, why do we say that? is that uh, sometimes in Bob J, it's very hard to know uh, what's going on and it's very difficult to make data-driven decisions because you don't always know what's going uh, inside the box. Uh, so that's why we often use that analogy. Uh, so in terms of the assessment that we have, uh, so that's a program that we've launched with SAP and really the main advantages of the program is you're going to be able to find out, you know, what licenses are not being used. Uh, that's really uh, a key element uh, in the program, but as well as what reports are never being used. Um, so uh, the other cool thing about 360 Scan is when you want to go to SAC, okay, outside of knowing things, you know, which licenses are not being used, you can actually go deep inside and you're able to find out, okay, actually, 360 scan, tell me what reports can actually be converted to SAC. So there are two approaches. On one end, you've got the licenses, and then on the other end, you've got the report. So we're going to give you information around that with 360 scan. So that's very, very interesting. And 360 scan itself is actually very, very easy to run. Uh, and typically it takes about an hour to run. Uh, so that's actually uh, rather quick and that's quite conservative. Uh, and all the information that are extracted are completely anonymized and the information stays on-prem. So it never leaves your environment. Um, well, I'll finish talking. I'll pass it over to Patrick to do a short demo of 360 scan. Uh, Patrick? Okay. Thank you very much, Bruno um, and Jason. Right, so 360 Scan is part of the 360 Suite solutions. Um, just as um, you know, as a reminder, we've been an SAP partner for the last 12 years. All of our solutions are uh, signed off and authorized by SAP. So the solutions I will show you here 
you know, it's not using any hack or anything like this. It's a it's a proper and authorized SAP solutions, right? So I'll talk about um, how to register um, to this, which is free. Um, like like Bruno um, have said, and I'll show you um, the different steps that are involved um, to run it and uh, and extract this anonymized um, metadata. Right, next slide should be this. Perfect. Okay, so I'll just go on my server and you should see my server now. Perfect. Okay, so first things first, it's easy. You get in touch with your SAP um, 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 sales rep or SAP pre sales. You get in touch with us directly with the different emails uh, we have um, available. We register, register you to the program and then you'll get a simple email. And that email will ask you to download a small zip file. It's 50 megs. In terms of installation, there's nothing to install. It's literally just to unzip that um, file that you'll be downloaded. Now, this zip, you can unzip it on a business object server if you like. It doesn't have to be your production server, any business object server. That's probably what the majority of our customers do. But we have people who prefer to run this away from the Bob J server. So they want to run this on their workstation or even from a USB key, if you like. It really doesn't matter. Again, there's nothing to install. No registry keys will be, um, will be created. No extra files on your server. Again, it's totally an independent solution. Right, so you see here on my screen the equivalent of this zip file being extracted and the license key right here that you receive by email. Now, to run 360 scan, there's an EXE, and then you have to answer very simple screens. We need access to the business objects SDK. So either you are on your server, like me, so you just specify the location, or if you are on the workstation, for instance, you just need to copy this location here, very simple. You then need a database to save the 360 scan metadata. Now, that database can be saved with you on premise. You know, you own your data, it's all yours. So here's an example here. I'm going now to use my um, local SQL server. But if you didn't have a database available, or it's not something easy for you to do, you can just save it in a local file database, and then you can upload on our secure cloud this file to us, and we will take care of refreshing the web intelligence reports for you. So it's really up to you. You run your own data, you refresh for yourself the reports, or we can assist you with that task here. So, so that's my database. I will just log on to my database here. Okay. Next step is we need this solution to connect to business objects because we need to extract me more metadata. So 360 scan will extract metadata from your system database, from the file store, but also from the audit database. Because again, to get history is good, but without the system database, you cannot get the non-history, things that have never happened, right? So let me just write my audit database information right here. Okay. And Bruno said it will run under an hour. It depends on the size of your environment, of course. On my server here, I have a few hundreds reports and I have, a, I have a couple of thousands of instances. This will run for two minutes, right? So under an hour is very conservative. It should run quicker than that. So here we go. Now extracting some um, system database metadata, some audit data, and a bit of file store. Here we go. Each runs in the background. Now, either you have chosen this live database, you upload, upload it to us, we take care of the rest, or then you import an LCMB file, and this LCMB file will contain, you can guess it, some universes and some pre-built reports which you can see here on my screen. Now, these reports, Bruno mentioned it, but I just want to reinforce that. 
they are all anonymized aggregated information there's no usernames there's no reports name there's you know there's no confidential information this is not um, an audit or compliance tool this is really an analysis to give you information that maybe you didn't know about your platform right if i open one of the reports here again this is uh, this is my 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 demo environment here but maybe you know maybe you didn't know you know the different type of documents you have right um gregory this morning said that explorer space and excelsius will not be part of 4.3 for good reasons you know flash will not be supported by the vendor by the end of this year well if it turns out you have some excelsius and some explorer space you need to decide what's going to happen with them sac will be a good natural fit um if you have lumira again Lumira is still supported, but it's quite a nice Viz solution. Is it is it time to make some decisions with SAC? So again, type of different solutions you have, the, do, the number of documents you have, which ones have been used at least once. Again, that helps in terms of cleanup purposes and making the right decisions. Now, not only corporate, but of course, with the personal content as well. So the more self-service you are, the more personal folder is important. So that's just an example here. Something important for your chat with SAP, if you choose to um, convert licenses, this document will show you here at the top the licenses that you have purchased. You know, it's in the CMC. You know, it's very simple. You probably know about it, but it's just good to have it in one place. And then you'll see the users by type. Active Directory, SAP Enterprise, how many you have, how many have connected, when they have connected, if at all. So then you can already have a good idea of um, users that you have on your system, which are perhaps uh, you know, not needed. Uh, I'll just jump here to session peak and I'll go back forwards back uh, in a sec. Right, that's another good, very good thing here. Your sessions at peak, if I give you an example, you purchased 100 concurrent users. The peak is 30. Well, you have 70 licenses not used. This is the kind of information you want and SAP needs for both of you to agree on something. We also have a report. Uh, you purchased uh, 50 named users. Only 40 of these licenses, named licenses, have been assigned. Well, there's 10 shelfware, so that's good to know. And we'll even tell you out of those 40 that are assigned, who has logged on and when was the last time. So once again, we're not saying that Bob or Joe or something have, lo have logged on or not, but at least you can make an educated decision based on facts of users and licenses and type of licenses that have been used. And now there's other helpful information and then I'll, 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 I'll give it back to Bruno in a second because we have, uh, also um, 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 somebody else from SAP to speak, but you know, type of actions that has been made. Do you save a lot to Excel? If so, you know, why? Um, we've done this recently, there were 200,000 exports to Excel. Well, we need to understand a bit more, you know, why there are exports to Excel. Your scheduling analysis is important. Um, do you schedule a lot? Um, and then what do you do with, with these instances? If you schedule a lot of complicated stuff, well, then these reports will have to remain on, on, on business objects. Reports that you don't schedule a lot in reports that contain charts. We can tell you these things as well. These are good reports, which will be candidate or SAC. So this is just a very brief example, but um, this is um, what 360 scan looks like in terms of extracting the metadata and presenting it anonymously uh, to help you take better decisions. Hey, thank you very much, uh, Patrick. That was an excellent demo. And by the way, you can also use 3CC Scan uh, to be going on HANA or STE. So that's very valuable for that. So uh, the question is, you know, are you interested to get a free scan to gather evidence of your business object deployments? Uh, just let us know. And uh, if you are, we'd be more than happy to offer you free scan. Um, it's very easy. Just uh, let us know and we'll get back to you. Uh, so uh, I see about 30% of people have voted, and actually I see the uh, people have got quite a bit of interest uh, into SCAN. 
Um, so again, on what Patrick presented earlier, all the reports will be staying on prem, and the data stays on prem. Uh, so, uh, and whatever you want to share, if you want to share, basically the information is fully anonymized. So there is no names around users or reports intentionally. So that's by design. Uh, so for the next session, I'll be uh, passing it over to uh, Brian Kelly. Brian. Yes, sir. Can you guys hear me? We can. Go for it, Brian. Can you see my screens this second? We do. We do. All right. All right. Just want to make sure all this new technology, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so thanks, Bruno. Hello, everyone. Yeah, Brian Kelly here. Um, similar to Jason and, and, and to probably most all of you, I am an old Bob J guy as well. Um, I was came over with uh, SAP and I hit my 20 year mark this past year. So yes, it's very interesting whenever we have one of these things together. So uh, again, Bruno, Patrick and GB Smith, thank you guys for the invite. So I, well, I'll tell you guys just a quick little story. What happened is while we were going through the process, Jason had done his and then uh, Bruno was talking about it, and then it hit us that, you know what, maybe some people out there actually haven't seen SAP Analytics Cloud in action before. So that's when we decided, you know what, maybe we should um, turn around and start doing it so that you guys could see it. Now, Jason already talked about this. Yes, that SAP Analytics Cloud is going to be the strategic platform for the concurs, the uh, success factors, all the tools out there. <clears throat> so that question some of my customers goes, hey, is this just another SAP? Nope, there's a huge investment. This is the uh, direction the company's going. What is nice though, is that, um, that it was built from ground up. And I'm sorry, let's see if I can make my, too fast, there we go. But it was built from the ground up. <clears throat> Jason even mentioned it, is that this wasn't a port of business objects. It was uh, actually built with, a, with the concept of hybrid in mind. In other words, let's make sure we take care of our business objects folks. So from the get go, uh, we didn't want to get rid of those universes, right? There's a lot of time and effort that's been put into it, the security that's been put into it. So that's played a played a pretty big role for everyone, right? So <clears throat> we can actually take advantage of that and create dashboards and stuff off of your universe connections. You don't have to actually pull stuff up into the cloud. So it's very nice when we do that. One of the things though, just to kind of point out, and I'm gonna get into it a little bit more, was uh, <clears throat> it, very much like uh, business objects is a business intelligence tool. What was very slick, or what I thought was awesome, because I've been doing uh, BI like my whole, 30 plus year career, right? Was that we always had BI, but planning was separate. A predictive would be separate as well, but now they're all together into the single platform. What's also nice is that this platform is built on top of the uh, of HANA or the uh, for the HANA cloud platform. So it was built from scratch on HANA so that it can actually take advantage of all those things that HANA can do. If you're not familiar with HANA, it is an in-memory database. It's also a columnar database, but it's also an application platform. A whole lot of stuff that you can do with it, but what's nice, one of the things I always think about is ranks, right? And whenever we do ranking, if we have uh, you know, a 500 million row report, if we do ranking, that's a very strenuous resourceful, I mean, resource intensive uh, uh, action. But what'll happen is all that gets pushed to HANA to actually do that for us. And so it is really fast, comes back in a hurry. So that's one of the big things is that uh, it's not just BI, you get BI planning and predictive in it. Um, so one more slide and then I'm gonna jump into the demo. But it was, uh, as I mentioned this one, you get them all here. The other big one that I would say is that the pre-built content, there's a ton of line of business, uh, manufacturing, supply chain, HR, uh, industry, oil and gas, um, like I said, manufacturing, uh, supply chain, eh, tons of pre-built content out there. And the idea is that the metadata is there, all you gotta do is connect to it. If you're SAP, it connects automatically to it. If you are using something different, it'll actually, uh, you can tie that into that metadata layer as well. So. Very easy to get up and going fast. Um, I'm gonna slide over here. I'm gonna skip this middle one and you'll see why <laughs> in a second. But this, uh, the uh, number four is, 
absolutely 100% you can uh, consume it on uh, on a mobile device I mean you could do it with a browser it's uh, you know it's built with HTML5 it uses responsive um, uh, has a responsive engine so that you can actually view it depending on whether it's uh, Apple or Android and so it actually has applications for both of those so yes you can consume it any way you want to in responsive design you can design it once and it's done so um, that's pretty slick. That way we don't have to actually build to the uh, platform itself. And then there's also the application design. Um, Jason talked about that a little bit, but it's a great place for uh, uh, where you can actually build your own or even we have partners who are building uh, things for the analytics cloud. So that's that's pretty awesome. What I will do, let's see if I can make my little good. Yeah, there he comes. Okay. Is this was kind of the man you know again I'm, I'm 30 plus years been doing bi and i know you guys a lot of you are probably like me for years and years we've sat there we've uh we've rolled up uh <laughs> we've rolled up information right we, we've sat there and we drill 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 and we're always drilling and what we're doing is we're trying to dig down into the uh to, to the to the depths to figure out all right well what's driving this decision kind of goes back to that uh, well, why did it happen? But typically we were looking at old historical data. Um, what this does, it brings uh, predictive machine learning, uh, statistical deviation, correlation, all these things that I really have no idea how it works behind the scenes. And that's kind of the beauty of it, is I don't have to know how it works behind the scenes. And uh, that's what's great about it. So that's what I'm gonna show you guys. Enough of my talking. What I'm gonna do is jump into a demo and I'm gonna take it from an angle that, um, in fact, let me see if I can get this little thing out of my way. Oh, for some reason I had my camera up here. I'm sorry, you guys were looking at. It. Hope you didn't have to see all that. Um, anyway, but as a the this is Ana, SAP Analytics Cloud, and the idea is that yes, you can build stories. Again, you can do planning, headcount planning, sales planning, uh, all of that. But I was thinking about. It, I said, you know what? What do most people end up doing? Well, a lot of folks tend to. Uh, run a report with Webby or schedule a report, and what what do people tend to they dump it to Excel, right? So they have. Uh, so I said, you know what? I'm just going to show you kind of where a lot of folks go with it, right? Let's create Excel and uh, let's see some of the smarts straight from where you can pull that data um, and drop it in. Now the beauty, the strength of it again is that there's live connectors for that universe. There's live connections into SAP, BW, and all these uh, different solutions. There's tons of connections to Oracle, SQL Server, all the things that you probably have uh, within your four walls, uh, we can access it or even hit it live where you do not have to move data up into the cloud. But here's just one of those classic examples, right? Now, what just popped up is I used a smart modeling feature that says, you know, if you feel lucky, bring it in and we'll do all the modeling for you. Now you can go back and change it, uh, but it's not necessary. So what I'm going to do here is uh, explore what you used to have, right? We know it's going uh, by the wayside because of Flash. Well, they've redone it for Analytics Cloud. Very similar if you haven't worked with it before. You just click on a measure, and this is one of the things that I really like. Now, notice it says show high data, and I've got a relatively small list here. But I know a lot of you, if you're like me, somebody would give me a spreadsheet, and I may have, or it may have 100 plus columns, right? Some insane amount. And we'd sit there and we'd scroll, scroll, scroll to the left and right, and we're trying to find our data. Well, at least this allows me to pick and choose what I'm looking at. So that makes it a lot easier. Uh, again, one of the nice, easy things about this is if I want to do data discovery, that's usually why I'm dumping stuff into Excel, is I'll come in here and I can hit a header, header pops up and uh, gives me the details. If I want to filter it, I just click directly on the value and that'll pop up for me and filter those down. So very easy to do uh, and, and actually do some of that um, uh, analysis and discovery. Now, one thing that it will do, and I just wanted to point this out real quick, is notice this order ID, and it has these numbers. Now, this was a, a spreadsheet. And what happens typically when we do an import of data from Excel? If it's these numbers, by golly, it's going to turn it into a measure, right? So what happens is 
the smarts are, have actually learned that if it has a like a space ID or if the ID pops up like that and it sees numbers, it's even learned that, hey, you know what, that's probably a, a, a declaration ID or something along those lines. Let it, uh, let's not make it into a measure. So again, smarts are all over the place uh, as we look at it. So what I want to do is just pick one and we'll say this product, it's, uh, oh, this is some, a bike company's data. Um, so what happens, it brings it in and you'll see it's, it's like a lot of other tools, gives me suggestions as I change. If I had a date field, of course, it'll turn it into a trend line. It's got the ability to do the sort, like the top end I said it had, if I wanted to, I could do a top end and the ranking would take care and it happens in a split second. The other thing though, is that if I've been working over here in this uh, explore discovery mode, I can take my results and actually copy them to one of my stories pages. And here, again, is really almost the canvas of where we start to build stuff. Now, if you're like me, the first thing I do when I was creating reports and so forth, it was, all right, well, what's your goal? What do you want it to look like? And then I'd spend some time finding the data, getting it correct, getting some of the uh, analytics themselves in place. I'd kind of give hand back and say, all right, is this close to what you're looking for? Yep. And then we'd go on and build it and make it pretty. Um, the question always came up though, is that, well, what I want to do though, is once I get here, I want to be able to drill, right? I need to drill, look into it, see if I can find an answer. So what's interesting about this augmented analytics, and this goes back to uh, the true differentiator about SAP Analytics Cloud, is I can come in here, and there's a ton of things, and again, guys, I'm more than happy to come out or do a virtual, full-blown SAC thing for you, but for this, uh, just to show you that there's this thing called a smart insights. Anytime you see the word smart, okay, that's when you know some of this augmented analytics is going to happen. And you'll see what, what occurred on this one. I said, all right, based on all these numbers, give me some insights. Normally, I would have to drill and maybe I would stumble across this because this order value for this E148 is 32% above average, blah, blah, blah. And it's significantly driven by country China. All right, now that's something that I could have drilled and drilled and then brought in country, but you'll notice country is not part of this uh, analytic right here. What it did was look at all the uh, dimensions uh, behind the scenes and it decided, okay, based on certain standard deviations and what actually had the most correlation and blah, 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 it figured out what was important. And that's what's really cool now is instead of me having to might have figured it out, I'm letting the system figure it out for me. What's also pretty awesome, okay, well, he did an E148, but what if I want to know details right here on this M550 bike? What I can do is actually do a right click and say, I want to do a smart insight, right? You see that happening more and more. I want a smart insight, and I want you to look at this value right here and tell me what are some of the contributors. And that's what's really cool is now I can go in and if I see an issue or a problem, it goes, all right, well, how has this changed over time? And then it'll do variants or, you know, year over year, quarter over quarter, period over period. It'll go ahead and populate and create something for that because, you know, we tend to want to know in a comparison fashion where it should be. The thing is, though, that once I've got it, I go, hmm, I may want to look at that some more. And I'll just do a quick, hey, I'll copy that over to... Uh, page one. I can keep going down through here if I see something that, oh, you know what? Uh, here's something about sales agents. You know what? I'm going to copy that over. I might need that in a minute. And what's pretty wild about this is even as you find stuff, you can come in and actually do smart insights on top of smart insights. So in other words, now I can go in and say, oh, well, if this is the top sales rep, then let me see what kind of details. Oh, you know what? Here's their top customer. And this is how far they are above all the rest of them. I mean, it's that kind of stuff that we used to spend a lot of time trying to figure out that analytics cloud just brings to the table. So as you can imagine, right, if we had this kind of uh, capabilities and all those universes we've already built, how cool would that be? All right, I see my time's ticking along, so I want to show you another smart thing. So very cool, smart insights, a little smart modeling, Oop, not that one. <clears throat> and especially anytime you see a light bulb, go ahead and click on it. Can't hurt anything. This is one that uses natural language query. 
And uh, what happens is, and it's it's a little, well, it's coming back. All right, so there was a microphone here. The microphone's about to be back into the product line. There was some legal stuff, and I, want, I, and I don't know the whole backstory, but uh, the thing is, you used to, could talk to it like you would talk to, and I won't say any of their phone's names or the, you know, the beer can thing that talks to you, but the, uh, you could talk to it and just start asking it questions. Now, of course, I'll type it, but it was really cool when you could just talk to it. So I'll say something like, um, well, show me order value. And you'll notice as I type, it picks out the things that I've most recently been working with. And that's also pretty cool is that it actually knows the models that me, Brian Kelly, working in the system tend to work with. It says show order value by, and uh, let's see, how about uh, products? Yeah, they look, they look similar to what we were doing. And I could have misspelled it, but you'll see as it goes along, it'll start laying stuff out. I'll say by product. Hit enter, and it'll go in and give us that same type of report we had earlier. Now, what's cool is when you have dates, you can actually do for the two previous periods, and you can start asking it questions like that. Or you could say uh, for, now check this out. I'm just gonna put in, and it could be United Kingdom, United States, whatever. But it, that typically would have been a dimension that equals United States, but let's see what it says there. And when it comes up, you'll see that it says for product for United States, here's the one filter that it's running. You'll see that it pulled up country filter. So kind of a good quick way to get going with it and similar to all the rest of them, I can actually just copy this back over to that same page. So if you look at it, we've created a lot of stuff already in our story. And I see my clock ticking, so I'm gonna show you guys this one last cool thing, and then again, call me, I'm more than happy to talk to you further. It's a thing called Smart Discovery. This is where we take everything and we pile it in together. And this is doing regression analysis and classification and a whole bunch of stuff. Um, but the idea is, if I've got a value and I wanna find out the details around it. I can actually filter it with the advanced options and, and narrow down my search. But typically when I have one of my customers gives me some data and says, hey, we want to build some charts on this and blah, blah, blah. Uh, we'll take that data. And the very first thing all of us do is, is just drop it right in here into this smart discovery. It's very interesting. Um, uh, Jason and I work with the government uh, um, customers we were doing one the other day uh, for uh, the company that does all the bidding and the um, uh, bidding that didn't really make sense the lease they, they manage the lease where all your government property may be or if cars and so forth like that that were government owned and what uh, we did is we just, we just you know, right all that's public data or at least at a high level is public data and uh, we went out and used, just scraped some of that data and we ended up finding some very interesting facts, which was kind of surprising to uh, the customer as well. But anyway, with this guy, it runs and um, usually two minutes or less, it'll come back. And what you'll notice here is that uh, it goes in, now that was the page we were creating earlier and it's going to create us four other pages, key influences, unexpected values and simulation. All right, right here it came in and says, hey, let's analyze the data. You'll notice that forecasting kicked in as well. So it has predictive forecasting. It sees the data. It's not just, here's the thing that I like is that it gives us a quality for our forecast. So right there, it's a five of five. Hey, as many times I get them of a two of five or one of five, meaning you don't have enough data. Here's some of those smart insights we typically see and how it's uh, grouped the data together. But what's interesting is when it gets to key influencers, and it goes and says, all right, well, based on the data that you are looking at, here are the top influencers. And I think I've got 12 or four, what, what, yeah, right around 12 dimensions here. And it said, these are the ones that have the biggest effect. And of course it says units sold. Well, of course that one would be higher, but these others actually kind of surprised me. The number of customer meetings, that was a bit of a surprise. Product, I, I guess I could see that one, but it goes ahead and it breaks down this information and says, and here's how, and this is the unit sold. So of course, the more units I sell, the better. But this one gets interesting. The number of customers influence the order value, meaning that the number of times I call on a particular customer, and does that affect if they'll buy or not buy? And then it groups the data together so you can actually track it. 
Well, what I what, what's fun to me is, hey, let me take that and tie in the sales agent as well. So in other words, let me see which sales agents are the top sales agents. And then from there, maybe I can talk to these guys and help the rest of the team figure out what you, we should be selling. So that's kind of cool. Um, and I see I'm down to three minutes. So unexpected values. This is where we did that little search with the uh, government um, bidding, leasing thing. We found uh, a bunch of trailers or a trailer that was listed at $1.2 million. Um, long story behind that one, but we figured it out. It was quite interesting. <clears throat> the other one is simulation. This is a great what if place where you can play with the levers of uh, what drives that order value. Uh, you know, this is one of those things people like to uh, mess with. All right. Uh, could I do it with fewer? If I did fewer meetings or calls, what would that do? And it pops up and says, hey, you put fewer in there, you're going to get less uh, response out of it. Crank it up, you'll probably do better. And, but this is where you can actually go in and, and all right, you know what, I want to try this bike or that one or try whatever. And it's a way to actually play with the data and let it give you the information you need. All right, so that was a flash run by just the augmentation parts of uh, Analytics Cloud. You can make it very pretty. Um, we, Like I said, tons of samples, but uh, at this point, I'm up to two minutes, and I know Bruno's giving me the eye through the phone. I can feel it. So, um, <laughs> Absolutely. Bruno, I will hand it over to you and let you close this out, man. 